I asked my roommate how to say hi because I didn't really <laughs> see you guys for a long time, right? I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, so she just said I should say hi. Okay, but that's not my style. So welcome everyone again. And well, it's an afternoon here and finally I was able to make a video for you guys because you kept messaging me and you kept asking a lot because I think everyone is now really stressed about applying for the scholarship and I understand that. I remember when I applied I might have been the same. I might have asked some people about how things are going but yeah I mean it's still you know like Korean guidelines guidebooks are not really the best especially when they are in English because they are not all the time um, very clear so I think it like thank you guys really because like many of you wrote that it was really helpful watching the videos and some of you even wrote to me in person to ask some other stuff and I can see that there are some questions which are still not clear even though they are in the guidelines and I know why you asked them because when I was applying I indeed had problem understanding I mean I understood the lines but I had second thoughts uh, do they mean what I mean they mean or do they mean something else it, it's something which can really happen and like don't worry about it because it usually it's just how they mean it and nothing else so okay uh, let's actually start the topic I prepared for today and it is basically of how to nail your your interview for the KGSP scholarship because I know that you're getting closer to that point. It's probably going to be in the middle of March, if I remember well. So I think with this video coming out now, it will give you enough time to, to prepare yourself and to get some ideas of how to prepare for the interview itself. So the first point is that you should try not to be ner <laughs> nervous. I mean, I know that it's a very, very, very hard thing to say because I'm also always nervous if I'm having an interview or uh, speaking in front of a lot of people. It's hard not to be nervous and I'm not saying not to be at all. Maybe I'm just saying that try not to show it that much because if you walk into the room where you will have the interview with three or four members of the committee, then I think the best entrance is that you show that you're confident and you know what you want to do in your future. And yeah, you're like, you, you should seem confident. And the other thing is smile. Smile is not forbidden. Smile when you enter, say hi with a big smile and whatever question you have, just don't forget to smile at the end. I think it really can help uh, the perception they receive about you. The second most important thing is that you don't really have to be that creative during the interview because they will literally like in my case because everything I say to you guys is from my experience so I don't know how it is in other countries actually I know so in Hungary all the applicants were called in to a room one by one and there were there were I think three people okay let me ask my roommate three yeah she says three actually I wanted her to to be in the video but she's very shy so she's not brave enough yet but believe me I will make her be in the video during the next six months <laughs> so yeah so there were three people in the committee and they were all Koreans obviously 
but Koreans who work at the Korean Cultural Ministry. So that was in Hungary. But my Japanese friend actually told me that in their case, because there were much more applicants than in Hungary, uh, the applicants were called in uh, at the same time. Three applicants were called in at the same time. And they just, they, they asked the same questions. I don't know, and that's all I know. So it's different for every country, but I think for most of the countries it's one by one, so you will be alone in front of the committee. And it's not a problem if you don't speak Korean. They will know if you speak Korean or if you don't speak Korean, because they will know if you have topic or not. So... In my case, I didn't speak a word of Korean, okay, just the basics of Korean when I went in, so they never asked me in Korean, thankfully. So, okay, so you walk in totally confident, totally happy. You should know what you wrote in your application, because that's all they will ask at the beginning. So, maybe with different words, but what they are curious about is, who are you? What are your experiences? Are they relevant to Korea or like the Korean society or anything related to Korea? And what's your study plan? What do you plan to study there? How? Like everything you wrote down. I mean, just remember you're not a robot. So you should, of course, use a bit different words, not just because you know if you say the same thing it can it can have the effect of you studying it in and that's just too artificial. So just just know what you want to do there and just try to explain it to them. And what else? Yeah, your future plan. It's also in your application, right? So what I think one of the most important things, and they will also ask you how you will benefit from it, how Korea will benefit from it, and how everyone will benefit from the, the fact that you are going to actually study in Korea. So in my case, they asked me, I don't remember exactly how, but it was a clear question about how is it like how will it be beneficial for 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 my country and for korea if i study what i want to study in korea with the scholarship so just know your application essays and you have i think 80 percent of the interview already done and then come the questions which you cannot be prepared for. These questions are asked by certain members of the committee. These are random questions. In my case, I had been asked if... if because I just basically, when my interview took place, that was one day after I just got back from a business trip from South Korea. So, and they knew that, so they actually asked me uh, how I like the country and if I think I can fit into the society. Now, after nine days, of course, it's hard to say, but you know, everyone has a perception. So, yeah, I, I had an easy answer for that. And they also were curious how I think about the culture and the language itself. And yeah, they were really keen on the society, guys. I think they will probably have a question. I don't know. Emmy, did you ask you anything about society? She had the same question. So I think they are really the same question about the society, if she can fit in or not. I think it's really important for them to know because because there there were people before who cancelled the scholarship because they just couldn't fit in. Everything was weird. I have right now classmates whom I know that they were crying in the first two, three months of the scholarship. It was really hard for fitting. I know some are not eating Korean food, some are avoiding Korean food, they don't like it, they eat the Western food, it's expensive. I will make another video about that actually. So they really want to know if you are the right person to send to Korea and if you are the person who can actually 
like finish the program because to be honest as I said in my previous video video like one of I think it was the first video I made about KGSP that many people don't finish the program and many times it's because of the culture so like you should also think about it in like for yourself for your sake because if you feel like there is a chance you wouldn't fit in, just like then don't apply, or or just just really consider it because it's going to be very uncom uncomfortable if you cannot fit in. Uh, I can see it on the people uh, on some of my classmates. They they really struggled in the first period. After a while, it got better for them, but they're still you can feel that they are still not fit in. They just they just learned how to handle this whole situation and the feelings they have so yeah like they are curious about that i'm pretty sure you will have a question similar to that the next thing they asked me was what i didn't like about korea when i was in korea and even though i said that there i didn't really meet anything special i didn't i don't really remember anything which i didn't like about because it was just like nine days or not even nine days so it's hard you know to 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 get to know a country by nine days or a society but they were really keen on getting me saying something about negative effects and negative parts of Korea so for those who who know Korean I cannot help that much but I so this is the part where Emmy should sit here and my roommate should sit here and tell you what, what her case was because she is really good in Korean and her interview was half in Korean or the whole? No, no okay. not the half. Okay, some only. Okay, so she says she's here. <laughs> I will translate. <laughs> so actually okay not the whole it was mainly but they asked her if she wants it in english or korean and she chose english uh, one more thing for everyone regarding the interview uh prepare to have a kind of question from the committee which will push you out of your comfort zone because this happened with us I don't know if this happened with anyone else in any other countries, but this happened with all of us. So the three member committee from the three members, one member knew uh, Hungarian as well, or maybe the others knew as well, but they didn't speak. So all of them asked me in English, but suddenly in the middle of the interview, this lady asked me in, in Hungarian. And you know, it's like, it's weird because you talk in English and they are Korean, but then someone suddenly asks you in your native language a question, you can be confused. Now, I, like, this is not enough for me to be confused. So I was just, I, I just asked them if they want me to answer this particular question in Hungarian or English. They said whatever I want, so I just went on with English because I felt like I was speaking English the whole time, why would I change now? And it could maybe also mess with my mind, so I just answered in English. The same happened to my roommate. Um, you know, she's also Hungarian, so we were actually in the same, with the same interview committee. Uh, they asked her also in Hungarian and she answered right away in English. She didn't even ask, but this is also good. But she also told me that there was another girl who, who actually said after she finished the interview that when the lady asked her in Hungarian, then she froze for a minute or so. And you know, that means that you're like, <gasps> like that's not a good impression if you, you, you freeze only if you can handle it well after but as you can see she's not here with the program so just just be prepared and just just try not to freeze because I always just try to handle the situation the best you can and and then everything will be cool these are all of my suggestions for the interview don't be nervous it's not going to be long and they are basically 80% is going to be about what you wrote down already 
and the 20% is just your intuition and just questions like random questions about the uh, culture about the society of Korea and ab about how you can fit in here so all I say is uh, just be calm and try to enjoy your in interview that always helps if you try to enjoy your interview and smile a lot be confident and good luck guys